As you all know, I've been taking a look at every single PETA game that I can get my hands on. All the games I've found so far have been from PETA.org directly. But little did I know, that is not all of their games. There's a lot more they've been hiding from us. There's this website called PETAKids.com. The fact that they even have a kids website to begin with is very alarming. Some of the horrifying games that we've already talked about are on this website. These games contain direct links to animal abuse compilations. Those links lead to age-restricted videos. It doesn't sound like the game is made for kids if it links to an age-restricted video. Let's just move past this. I think we're all in agreement with how messed up this is. I think the main reason PETA doesn't include some of these games on their actual website is the fact that some of these games do not work anymore. Other than that, there's some mobile games that have just been taken off of the App Store. Every game aside from one works on PETA.org, so I'm not sure why that's updated but they haven't updated the website for kids? I guess kids just aren't as important. So today I won't be able to play any of these games, but for most of them I found footage online so we can roast them just the same. On top of that, we'll be taking a look at PETA's Minecraft server. I'll skip all the games I've already talked about, but other than that, I say we go right down the list. Let's start with Paintball Hero. This is a mobile game that was made by a 17 year old in 2017. And unlike the last PETA game that was made by a teenager, this one at least looks nice. The only gameplay I can find online is this preview. And it's actually uploaded by the teen who made the game. The editing to this preview makes everything look a bit confusing in my opinion anyway. But I'll play it for you while I explain the game. This is a short game with only 3 levels. In level 1, you save animals trapped in factory farms. You pick up paintballs in the level which you use to educate, aka knock out, corporate enemies. I guess there's also a mechanic where if you have an animal following you, you get some kind of buff? The second level is rainforest themed. The goal is to save animals and stop deforestation. And the final level is saving circus animals. Oh yeah, and there's microtransactions. This game actually looks... Fine? I do like the visuals, but it looks pretty simple, easy, and is short, so I don't think I would have been crazy about the game. But from what I can tell, I don't think there's anything wrong with the game. We don't really know, but it doesn't seem like PETA is pushing their agenda down your throat as hard as they usually do. As far as I can tell, I'd say good job to the kid who made the game. It looks very impressive for a 17 year old. Although this game is lost to time, let's not forget the message because it's an important one. It's not okay to abuse animals, but it is okay okay to hit strangers with a paintball gun. The next game is Butcher Goes Vegan. This time I actually have more gameplay to show. By the way, when you click the link on PETAKids.com, it brings you to this sketchy looking website. And we all know how kids love sketchy websites, so I'm so happy PETA still has this up. Anyway, so this is another mobile game. This game plays like Flappy Bird, but vertical. You play as a farting balloon cow. The cow is always moving from one wall to another. All you do is tap the screen to give it some height. In the same way that your tap affects how Flappy Bird jumps, your tap affects how the cow moves upward. There's gems you can collect for upgrades. The only obstacle in the first level are these butchers with... Boners? When you die, you get a classic PETA fun fact. Once you get to floor 50, you unlock a pig who you now play as. The pig doesn't play any differently. The only new addition to this level are these butcher knives coming out of the buildings. I assume you unlock more animals as you go on and maybe more obstacles? But I don't know for sure because I couldn't find any more footage on this game. I did find an Instagram account for this game and here are the other characters that you can play as if you're curious. It's so hard to judge these games when I've never played them myself and I don't have a lot to go off. But again, I guess this game is fine? Next is Seal's Hero. It's another mobile game and the only footage I could find is this recording from 2019. Personally, I wish people still recorded Let's Plays like this. So I guess the premise of the game is to stop people from clubbing seals by painting them? I don't know if painting seals is a thing people actually do to protect seals. I didn't find any information about that, but whatever. The base mechanic of the game is you draw a line from your character to the seal so your character can paint the seal and protect it from seal clubbers, I think. As the levels go on, there's obstacles you need to get through to get to the seals. The video only shows the first three levels, but it seems like the gimmick is you have to find the most efficient path to the seals before the time and your energy runs out. The video also shows microtransactions that seem to always be at the bottom of the screen. You can buy a super pickaxe for $5, snowshoes for $5, 
or a hovercraft for $30? It also looks like there may be one more microtransaction right here, but they never click on it in the video. I cannot fathom spending $40 on this mobile game, especially with how unresponsive the game seems when the person tries to click on these little bubbles to begin with. And by the description, it sounds like once you buy these, you're insanely buffed. And maybe with a hovercraft, you can just go over everything? So in other words, spend $40 to automatically win and to have to not play the game at all anymore. But that's just speculation on my part, so let's move on. Turkey Lurkey, the master of disguise. Good luck finding a more dapper turkey than that. I could not find any footage of this game. I think it's just a slide puzzle from the looks of it. The only thing I found in general about this game is this Facebook post by PETA. No one comments about the game here aside from one guy who could not finish the puzzle in any browser that he tried. So as always, I'm sure this game was high quality. I can't tell if this game is literally just one puzzle or more. The comment just reads puzzle, but he may be referring to the first puzzle. Either way, I doubt there's much more to this game. Elephants never forget memory game. It's exactly what it sounds like. At first, the game looks very cute. You choose your difficulty, how many players there are, and then you're off to the races, and... Oh, come on. All you have to do is match the pictures together before the time runs out. I would hate for my children to play this game. It starts off normal, but as the levels go on, the pictures just become creepy and sad. I believe there's only five rounds in total, and when you beat it, you just get this screen and that's it. I think the idea behind this game is that elephants never forget the abuse you put them through. But that does not matter at all because the game does not educate kids at all. All it does is show you these pictures on the cards and gives no information for these kids to learn. The kids are probably just confused thinking why are these elephants crying and that's it. I guess PETA is probably thinking kids are gonna go, okay so there's these evil clowns on these cards circus tents, sad elephants, and tombstones. This must mean circuses kill and abuse elephants. I cannot support circuses anymore. Now where'd I put my applesauce? Now let's create our own sea kitten. In this game you have some fish to choose from and then you dress them up. That's it! Dress up games used to be popular in the old Newgrounds days. Hey honestly, right here, this is the look. If you look like this and wear this daily, just, just message me. And this plays exactly like any other one. The fact that PETA made this game is surprising. Fish are not animals you can dress up, and this looks like a lot of stuff could easily fall off the fish and pollute the ocean. I have no idea what the goal of this game was. I also feel like they would be against dressing up a turkey, but whatever. According to PETA, Mario touching a leaf and then magically dressing up like a tanuki shows it's okay to wear real animal fur. But then dressing up a live fish doesn't send off any kind of bad message? Like, PETA, you can't have one without the other. Last but not least, we have Seal Slalom. The goal of this game is to help seals in Canada this holiday season. All you do is steer left to right as you go down a mountain. You can get snowflakes to go faster and jump off these ramps. The people with clubs and trees will slow you down if you hit them. There's no real way to fail this. The goal is simply to make it down the mountain as fast as possible. Possible. And that's it! Now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's take a look at PETA's Minecraft server. Unfortunately, the server is no longer up and I really couldn't find a whole lot of footage on it. In this server, PETA assures that no animals will be hurt. You can explore a huge vegetable and flower garden, a recreation of PETA headquarters, and an abandoned slaughterhouse. The best footage on this server that I could find was this video by IGN. It looks like a ton of work was put into this server and it actually looks impressive. According to this video, the goal of this server was to give people a glimpse of a world where slaughterhouses are forgotten relics, and all animals are free to live without being harmed. Uh, I don't think this server did anything like that. There's no doubt people were joining this server and probably getting banned left and right. I'm backing up this statement with all of the comments underneath this YouTube video. I really wish I had more footage to show you, but it seems like the server has been lost to time. I saw a video with like not a lot of views saying that PETA tried to sue Minecraft and that the server is still up, but I didn't see that information anywhere else. But if that is true, please let me know because I would love to take a full tour of that PETA Minecraft server. Now make sure you're subscribed because there are still plenty more PETA games to talk about.